it's just ginger ale because it's 11 a.m. And the only people who drink before 11 a.m. are newfies and people with a drinking problem. Although I don't really have a problem with my drinking, other people might. So the only way I can really summarize the way Mark Guggenheim ends the story is like you try to chase the last few people at a party who don't want to leave and they just they stick around until you really get pissed off. That's what this storyline is turning into. We are... Oh, crap. Started back in... Well, this plot thread started back in uh, X-Men Gold number 12, which I'll leave a link for about here somewhere, in case you really want to go all the way back and take a peek at it. The uh, last issue of the Negative Zone War, uh, it's the war in a place that doesn't matter, with the events that don't count, and the... Uh, I have to sum it up. That's it. We've wasted several issues. Nothing of any substance has happened. So last episode, if you weren't paying attention, and I don't blame you, the, uh, the X-Men Gold team got away from the stupid planet full of people that kill their children and cause Nazis and crashed on some other unknown planet in the negative zone. Storm is wandering around on an alien world with weather she cannot control, because reasons, and shut up, don't question it, Mark Gug knows what he's doing. No, he doesn't. About to be murdered by irony, murdered by a bad plot line. Meanwhile, back on the ship, uh, Gug's Mary Sue, Inc., who can do F and everything, comes across uh, Kurt with a little bit of a problem. So the first thing he does is uh, removes him from the problem. I'll go down a little bit further here. Yeah, that uh, that spike was probably keeping most of that blood in. There's a really fancy word, and it's like tempanation or something like that, about where an object stuck in a wound stops the bleeding. That was probably the best place you could have left him until you could give him some medical, some actual, you know, medical stuff. Thing is that uh, ink has basically been turned into some kind of. Voltron for powers. We'll have whatever he wants, and eventually Mark Gug will give, probably planning to give him his own series later in the future, where he'll do absolutely everything, including grow boobs, because that's, well, Marvel's not headed that way anymore, but... Meanwhile, Armor gets woke up the hard way by Wolverine. She hauled off, and he hauled off and smacked her. Um, I don't know how to tell you this, Armor. You are a kid around Wolverine. Getting five across the face is probably the best thing that could have happened here. Meanwhile, uh, having been thrown from the ship, Kitty and Peter are out here, and the guy who turns into the big metal dude, who's super strong, um, is incapacitated. That's even less plausible than Storm being stuck on a world where she can't control the weather. Right, sure. Makes perfect sense. Storm's fighting this thing with some kind of big stick she found on a planet with no goddamn rain or anything. Brings it down. Ink uses his healing abilities because he's Voltron to help himself all these powers and stuff. They meet up with Wolvie. Uh, Ink has some telepathy tattoo or some crap that they gave him when this whole thing started. Been reaching out with my telepathy, getting a whole lot of nothing. Got to consider the possibility they're dead. Ain't nobody gets to die on this team without my say so. Well, I'll tell you, Wolvie, they probably probably just want out of the book, and this is the fastest way. It's just to die. PD is falling ill. I will always uh, passes out, and uh, she does the cliche movie thing. You don't get to die, and starts beating on his chest, having performed CPR. This is not what you fucking do, okay? This this pounding with one fist like that, uh, no, no, it is it's two hands. You can get it here, like this. If I can get this on the screen, like this. Uh, Thirty compressions a minute, which comes up to the beat of another one bites the dust. Uh, there's another one about the same speed, but another one bites the dust. Uh, will not only help you concentrate on what you're doing, but will make sure you're doing it fast enough. This? Kitty can't do... She might give him a bruise. She might might you know, give him a purple nurple with that. She's not going to restart his heart. 
straight over top, chest compressions. That's how you do it. They haul him back to the ship. My powers have no control on this planet's weather. What, because it doesn't have weather? you got weather all around you. Obviously, it's got weather. Yeah, go for it. Why are we in the engine? The ship's in a gajillion pieces. So Kurt figures he's found some kind of magical MacGuffin that they can get it off, get them off the planet. D'Artagnan ships don't just navigate space, they pass between dimensions. That's how we were able to travel from the negative zone to Earth. Tell me it's a portal generator. I believe it's a portal generator. We need a large influx of power. Where are they going to get it? Ink's telepathy goes out. Finds the injured group. Right? Uh, we're good to go, provided Aurora can generate the required electricity. My problems aren't working. We'll get them. Excuse me. So, we'll be not Wolverine proceeds to give Storm a Kamina speech. Yes. It's a Wolby Kamina. It's not even a good Kamina speech at that. Right? Believe in yourself. You know. Uh, could have always said the part about the whole, uh, you know, believe in the me that believes in you. Right? Anyway, like what Logan's trying to say is, we believe in you. So don't believe in yourself. Believe in us that believe in you. <sighs> Worked on Gurdon Lagon. And all we need here is a spiral thing. <laughs> and they're home. Just like that. Bang. Because that's the easiest way of things to do. <sighs> Fast reviews of a blur. What's the last thing I remember? You breaking my ribs. It's called CPR, wise guy. That's not CPR. Gug, take fucking CPR. Learn how CPR works. It's not some 105 pound, 27 year old pounding on the chest of. What the fuck's with his. Fix your face. I've seen that face somewhere before, and that's not PD. That, that would almost be. If I had a transparency, that looks like... Tell me that doesn't look like Frank. <laughs> Colossus has been reincarnated as Frank Castle. What would you make for a pretty interesting storyline? Uh, I realized I'm never going to leave you. Is the offer still good? And she proposes to Petey. Now, I'm, there's a few people who are going to say that oh no, we've emasculated PD and made Kitty more masculine. If you have not paid attention to the amount of character development that Kitty Pride has had, that's what you would think. We're working at a character who's gone from a 15-year-old on roller skates in one of the worst costumes in X-Men history <laughs> to someone who's actually running the school. Uh, PD has remained the same softy he's always been. He's maybe a little less likely to sacrifice himself, but he's still the same big, lumpy softy. I'm okay with this. I'm absolutely okay with this. I would have been just as okay if he'd popped the question. But he's not the big... He's only the big confident guy when he's in the armored form, I guess. Right? I'm fine with this. The only problem is that weddings in the X universe tend to go really, really bad. Uh, bad things tend to happen. Now, on the upside, it's two superheroes getting married, right? This isn't going to be uh, North Star married. I can't remember the dude's name, and I have the issue somewhere. It was a very good issue, and a bunch of horrible stuff happened to him because he's a regular human. Uh. PD married MJ, and um, we all know how that played out, don't we, kids? But this this is this isn't a bad. Well, pfft, the storyline was bad. This isn't a terrible way to wrap it up. Okay, but at, at the end of the story, I'm still I'm still feeling very. I'm actually in a better mood now than when I started the book. Uh, unfortunately, next issue has us with PD being the one in peril and Kitty ready to help him. Is that avalanche? I should recognize this costume. I wonder if it's Avalanche or not. But anyway. Oh, God, it's been how many bloody issues? And the story that no... They wrote this for the, tea, the, the trade paperback, right? Goog intends for all of this shit to be in the TPB. 
pat it out as long as possible in the hopes that he'll get some, you know, residuals afterwards. No one's going to read this, Mike. No one's, this is, your, your series will be box filler. Hopefully someone better comes along and, and gets to write the X-Men. I really hope so. Anyway, I'd like to thank the uh, handful of new subscribers I picked up. This has been the Great Canadian Neckbeard. If there's something you would like an actual drunken Canadian to rant about, believe me, I wish I was right now, drop me a message, let me know, and I will see you in the future.